I have a shotgun pistol. This shit's crap. Sure. This is the first time Dizzy played oh, yeah, Apex. Yeah, uh, AR ammo? Oh yeah, it's okay. sucking me, Paul. Okay, like, and although he went to Endgame with the OG Mozambique, what we are witnessing here is one of the greatest pieces of Apex history. Oh What's my that, god, that was nasty! What are you doing? Okay. What are you doing? Trout is phenomenal. You are the best player I have ever seen. Fucking go, 33. That's it, world record. That's actually world record. Asu is NRG's certifiably cracked oh, frag. Oh my god. Oh, now he's showing off. Now he starts showing off once the, the numbers start to dwindle more. That is NRG Sweet, the best in-game leader ever since their existence in Apex Legends. Oh, the other two teams are fighting. Good nades, Nate. Swing right with me, Gil. Free fight, great shot being put in for Nate at the MVP. He's gonna do it. NRG is gonna be your champion. No way. Slams no way. I'm almost this. Just in case. Nice. Let's go, baby. Let's fucking go. go. This is the story of NRG. Oh. 2019 was the peak of the battle royale genre. With the success of games like PUBG and Fortnite, competitive FPS players were craving the next big BR game. Woo! Apex Legends had a surprise release on February 4th and took the industry by storm. Yo, this is the world's first gameplay of Apex Legends. Apex showed early signs of competitive viability. Esports orgs were sent into a frenzy to sign the best players in the game. Kobe Dizzy Meadows was a small streamer who primarily played Fortnite and was a former semi-pro CSGO player. Before anyone else in the industry, Energy saw the raw talent Dizzy possessed for Apex and quickly signed him as their first pro player within less than two weeks of the game being released. This was just in time for the first ever Apex tournament, the Twitch Rivals Challenge, including Ninja, Shroud, Dr. Disrespect, and more. Hundreds of thousands of viewers, all excited to see which of their favorite FPS players would frag out in this kill race style event. But what no one expected is that Ninja's unknown and faceless teammate would show them all up. All dead, all dead. Let's go, dude. Easy. Got him. Let's go. Let's go, uh, dude. How many kills did you have right there? Like 20? I think I got like 54. 20, 20, 20. I think I aced the whole server. On that day, Apex had 630,000 live concurrent viewers. And Dizzy's performance skyrocketed him into internet fame. Shout out to fucking Dizzy, by the way, for being absolutely insane. This kid's a legend. I played with Dizzy! I played with Dizzy! What the fuck? From streaming to 20 to 50 viewers, he was now bringing in tens of thousands. Good. Winning almost every kill race tournament for the next two months was quickly defining Dizzy as the best player in the game, and it was time for Energy's next big move. Yo, yo, what's up? It was like Energy could see the future and pick up the most polarizing players in Apex before anyone knew them. They signed Brandon Asu Win on March 6th, another former CS pro, and he was also Dizzy's friend. Oh, fuck, dude, that was sick. Asu, like Dizzy, had that raw aim talent. But he stood out as one of the first players to showcase the movement mechanics of Apex. Hey guys, welcome to the long-awaited movement video. I know you guys thought it was never going to come out. And finally, on May 16th, Marshall Moore joined the squad, forming the original trio of Energy Apex.
With Dizzy and Asu at the forefront, Energy became the most popular pro team in Apex. Over the next few months, they began to scrim and compete every chance they could get. Let's go, guys. 40, oh. holy <laughs> shit, boys. I told you, I was feeling a big one. The anticipation was all building up to Apex's first LAN, the X Games EXP Invitational. And this is where the team started to run into troubles. Dizzy blew up because he held the kill record for most kills in a single game, right? Yes. He came out of nowhere. He was just a force to be reckoned with and can pub stomp like nobody's business, okay? I think that that will necessarily translate over as well into the tournament style that he's going to, into for X Games. You have no so, faith. Got to think that those skills will be transferable in a situation like this. Skills, yes. Decision making is where I'm concerned. Energy, the fan favorite, had huge expectations to do well. They walked away from X Games placing only 13th out of 20 teams. And while one poor performance shouldn't be much of a concern, a similar story happened in Apex's first official land, the Poland Preseason Invitational. The lights are up, the stage is set, and it's time to begin. Energy had a very underwhelming 12th place finish, and within less than a year, Dizzy was already showing signs of burnout. You see, the quick launch to success saw Dizzy initially putting in 300 hours of streaming per month, and the excessive workload clearly began to take a toll on Dizzy's mental health. And on December 10th, 2019, despite being the number one player and the number one Apex streamer, Dizzy made an official statement that he would be retiring from Apex and resigning from NRG. NRG was still facing shakeups. After another poor performance in the first tournament of 2020, Asu moved away from competing in Apex and focused just on streaming. I started playing Apex because I got benched from my CS team and I didn't have uh, any revenue. I saw Dizzy, like Dizzy's my boy, right? And he inspired me to start playing Apex. And at the beginning, it was just kill races, right? It wasn't like actual competitive. And I've never played a battle royale competitively, so I didn't know what I was getting myself into, right? And competitive started forming, and I started seeing what a competitive battle royale is. That completely pushed me away. So I was mentally checked out for a long time. On top of it, the worldwide pandemic sent all tournaments online. Prize pools were massively cut, and the game saw a massive drop off in players and viewers since its launch less than one year prior. And then I was just stuck playing Apex, and I was stuck playing those tournaments online. But eventually I got, I was freed. Um, they let me out. One month after Asu quit competitive, Moore made the same decision to be a full-time streamer and content creator for NRG. But shout out NRG for really, you know, letting me uh, do what I want to do and not just completely dropping me. And shout out the old NRG, Apex Squad, Dizzy Moore, even Big Rich, shout out King Richard. I love all you guys. And this was the end for the original trio. Now, over the first four months of 2020, Energy signed Frexes, Nathan, and Rocker. These three previously competed together as unsigned free agents and had strong performances in top NA tournaments. In their first ALGS together, Energy finally struck gold. NRG in a perfect situation right now. It is an absolute firing range's rotation. But look at this position from NRG. Here comes the push. NRG looking for blood. They're going to drop at the same exact time. They're going to play that so incredibly well. All three members of NRG taking out all three members of the former Fnatic NA squad. And Asian, it's going to be BCJ getting some good shots in, but Shiny's going to go down here. Two versus two fight. All up to BCJ. Last member alive. He has some shield to his name. Gets a good flank through. Gets a good shot, but he downs one. Can he get the double kill? Goes for it. Hits a good shot, but he has two HP in a dream. He finally gets taken down, and that will be it. Rex is able to clutch the one versus one, but a valiant effort from BCJ. The moment you've been waiting for. OT6 is won by none other than NRG. They pull it through and they grab the final OT6 in Apex Legends ALGS before we head to the Super it wasn't enough though. Once again, it seemed the success was short-lived. Through the rest of 2020, NRG proved to be a top five North American team, but they simply could not close out a win. Without winning, NRG was never able to regain the level of status they had from the original trio. My contract is ending on January 1st and I will not be resigning to NRG, hosted by Frex. The boys stopped talking to me as much, we never played as a team. I think we were one of the best teams, but we could not win. During this time, Rocker was Energy's in-game leader, and according to Frex, he did not want to make calls anymore. Our Apex team was, you know, kind of stagnating a little bit. We didn't really have a true IGL. What they needed was someone with in-depth game knowledge and leadership capabilities. They needed someone that can make confident calls and micromanage Nathan and Rocker's top-level talent. They needed...
Energy signed Christopher Sweet Dream Sexton on January 7th, 2021. Sweet was the exact fit for Energy. He was a former H1Z1 professional. Dude, like literally, of course, the kid with the fucking golden gun literally fucking one shots me, you fucking piece of shit hacker. Reported. Had plenty of BR experience and had won several tournaments in Apex with his former team, Rogue. But the thing that stood out most about Sweet was his unique style of micro management IGLing. Red swap on the ground. Red swap on the ground next to us. I'm moving it up. Red swap on the ground. Alt them. Bop, 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 bop. Swap, swap. Crack bash. Crack me. Nice, hold them. Up a bat. It's last team. Get on top of this rocker. Get on top of red. Nate, pop your bat and we're fighting. I don't have, I don't have a Bobby, I'm coming. Give me 100. Pablo, if you have it, Rucker. I don't have it. Hold your knock if you die. I'm sending right. Dead, Bowser. Dead, give me. Let's go. I just went fucking huge. Good job, boys. And in the biggest tournament since the Poland LAN of 2019, Sweet finally delivered for energy. Squads remain our team that are match point eligible. It comes down to this. This is the last game. This is the final game as NRG is going to push against TSM. They find themselves in a 3v3 and CLG is just waiting. Look at the top left of your screen. You'll see the exact line as to where this ring is going to collapse towards. And it's central to all three teams right now. So no one with a significant advantage. If I had to give it to any team, it's NRG with high ground. What a finish it's going to be for the winner circuit. NRG can see all of TSM Ooh. and TSM is going to go down. Reps trying to revive how the zone is closing in very slow. They will be able to stay alive, but not for long. This, I believe, is up to NRG and CLG in the finale here. TSM is out. NRG pushing CLG on the low ground. Let's go! Let's go! NRG is going to be your champion of the winter circuit. Congratulations to NRG. They I mean, when did you realize that all three teams were on match point? Circles, uh, is it six or five? I don't know. But it, it was closing. It was us, TSM, and CLG. And Sweet Lily said, whoever wins this fight right now wins the tournament. They then picked up second in the next big tournament, the GLL Masters, and once again another first place in the Knights Carnage Cup. Suddenly, after two years, the tournament success put Energy back on top as a fan favorite team. Oh, that team got shit on. That bro, first team got shit on. My house is on fire. My house is on fire. My house is on fire. Oh my god. Sweet streaming career was blowing up. Before joining Energy, Sweet streamed a little bit. Uh, he's put a lot more focus on it, and I think the Energy platform itself is, has helped him a lot. His numbers have just exploded he's become one of the biggest apex streamers out just there felt like all of a sudden i licked up and the kid has like 20,000 concurrent viewers i know there's a lot in between there but this kid got signed to us competed at an incredible level and uh he just exploded and it was finally time for the tournament everyone in the apex community had been longing for the algs 2021 championship with a seven hundred thousand dollar prize pool the winner of this tournament would walk away with two hundred and sixty five thousand dollars Energy entered as the favorites to win from North America, and their performance in the group stages was making this all look true. Go ahead and put down in the dirt as NRG go ahead and clutch he it is. up. Can he clutch it up for NRG? He's got the other one, uses the shields back and forth, sweet! Oh, that was so jump in to our top seeded teams and really, I mean, it feels to me like there's NRG and there's everybody else. And NRG looking fantastic throughout the day. And on I Championship Sunday, however, everything just seemed to go wrong. With so much on the line, teams were playing as safe as possible. We were seeing Circle 5 zones with 18 teams alive and things were not going NRG's way. And this is not what you want to be in the position when you are center, when all the teams are focusing on you. NRG might have just been eliminated as well. It is is kicking off here in game number one. Two have pushed in. Nathan's been taken down. The first player will fall, and the second tries to go through the air. G2 have managed to come out on top out of all of this third party. And now they're turning their attention as well, and a big shot going to come in from Designful as well. And NRG are eliminated in game number three. In a bit of a disappointment, NRG only placed 10th. It was a shock to fans to see the poor performance when it mattered the most. How are you going to win?
every tournament before champs and then champs. Oh, Slurp, I've won more tournaments than you have tournaments you've ever been in, bro. Slurp, I've won more. I've been top fucking three in tournaments than you've even fucking played Apex games, bro. This was not much of a setback, as in ALGS's first six-week regular season, they came second by losing a tiebreaker for first. Do not let anyone climb here. Pick the bug, pick the bug. Bounce crack. Chill, 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 chill. Yes, we burn their bubble. We're fine, we're fine. One nice, on one nice. shot. I killed their Gibby. Just relax. They have no Gibby below us, no matter what. Falk is one. Falk is one. Falk is one. Falk is one. Look left, look left, look left. Sweet, turn around. I killed two below. I killed two below. Fuck them, fuck them. Fuck them, fuck them. Gibby, Gibby, Gibby. Kill, 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 kill. Get a swap, get a swap. They played this late game near perfect. This is textbook Apex Legends. NRG looking for the last rat, looking for the last KP, and they're going to find it. NRG with a near perfect game number one. But again, going into the split one playoffs is where a pattern of energy's performance in big tournaments begins to arise. The team performed extremely well through the group stages and the bracket stages. Hal goes down, Joey goes down, and NRG is your champion. A commanding performance had them fighting for the win on Championship Sunday. But once again, they they could not find a way to close it out. Cautious energy is eliminated. The first of our match point teams LG over TSM will be your champions. Can they do it? Oh, wow, the winners of two knots here. TSM, this is it. TSM are your champions within the NA playoff. This is now the second time where energy struggled to secure a win on match point. The next tournaments up were the most anticipated tournaments in three years. The split two playoffs and the ALGS 2022 championship lands, where teams would be able to compete on a global stage. No matter how dominant energy is leading up to a big tournament though, when it counts the most, things don't go energy's way. By hard decky. He's knocking sweet in the kill feed. But hard decky just knocked Nathan. And now hard decky knocks Nathan to the edge zone. He's most likely gonna die here, but he's griefing the crap out of them. And he knocks sweet as well in the kill feed. Hard is gonna be griefing energy. And they're full dying. Hard decky griefing NRG and Rocker is gonna be the only one alive. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm getting Maggie Cued. Yeah, he finally hit the wall. You might be fine. This is alive. We got cost gold. Yeah, we're getting pushed. We're getting pushed by fucking Dua. Are we living? Like, is this? Where most teams would make many roster changes, whether they were performing well or not, NRG was one of the few that stuck together for over two years. That being said, they still weren't satisfied with their performance in major tournaments. As true competitors, NRG wanted to show they have what it takes to win when it counts most, and show the Apex community that they are one of the best teams in the world. It was time, finally, for this iconic trio to experience change. After the ALGS Championship concluded, I told them I was going to be done playing the game after Champs a long time ago. Closer to Champs, I realized I, I didn't want want to stop playing but i kind of wanted to play with a new team there was no main reason why i wanted to do it it literally is just because i wanted to like have like a you know a new team there was like there was two big offers for me that i didn't know what to do and i ended up choosing C9. energy knew that their overall competitive success and position as one of the most popular apex teams allowed them to pick up whoever they want speak generally about the decision there's two trains of thought we pick up a very talented um, mnk gibby or we're gonna go controller rock we're either gonna pick up a fucking top controller player like top three top four in the game me and nate are still trying to figure it out and on August 12th, 2022, they announced the signing of Gilderson. Gilderson was one of the hottest players in Apex. He was making a name for himself with outstanding performances with Team Liquid at the Sweden and Rally Lands. Guild would be the first controller player Energy ever signed in three years and add to the fragging capability of an already very strong fighting team. Get in there, Guild. My three nade for you. Guild just cleaned up two teams. Nice, Zach. Play your life, play your life. Just sit. Holy shit, Zach. Let's fucking go, Guild. Let's yeah. go, baby. And it appeared that the chemistry of Nathan, Sweet, and Guild would come very quick. In the newly established Oversight League, a $100,000 third-party Apex Pro League with all of North America's top teams, Energy consistently placed first overall and won the split one and split two playoffs back to back. To assist the team with game analysis, strategy, and ironing out issues they were facing, Energy picked up their analyst, Sven. Strats and 
all his ass back with us. Signed him up for energy. Yep. But yeah, Sven's our uh, new analyst. Not a coach, but our new technical analyst. Lives in China. Nicest guy you'll ever meet. It's been a blast working with him so far. I've learned more in the 20 minutes of being with him than two and a half years playing this game. Really exciting. Exactly what we are looking for of an analyst. It was time for energy to see if they can silence the doubters at the year three London. Land. And if you've seen my video on the rivalry between TSM and NRG, you know how electric this tournament was. NRG right out the gates had a strong start. And now it's just NRG, man. Ultimate height. Team at height all by themselves. Top Triple four scenario. Triple red armor looking like some raid boss. That's what I'm saying, man. Oh my goodness. And they're going to have to walk through zone here. It's going to be the last one. NRG with one more. Not much other teams can do. Guild trying to get the KP again. He runs to the backside. And NRG is your game for champion. They locked in winner's bracket on day three with a tie for third out of the group stages. Now, despite not winning a game in the winner's bracket, all three members fragged out with Nathan leading the entire bracket stage in kills. See on the battlefield, Sweet will come out on top and Nathan is smiling. And let me tell you, that isn't a touch of the knees. That's bullets in the death box. Once again, this placed them as the first seeded team and provided them a 10 point advantage going into championship Sunday. And this is when Energy's game four performance shocked the entire Apex community. 14 kills. Unbelievable by NRG, man. Sweet saying, hold up. Let me just get the match point real quick. That's what I'm saying. We are yeah. just keeping on going. Again, it is a train that's being run through. Four and more KP. I believe it's going to be Gombre. It's going to be one of the only And with the momentum the NRG have, is there any way that you can say Geo can do something to stop it? The Newcastle oh, defensive oh, wall goes down. Oh, Oh my god, and NRG side. with a 20 kill win. 32 oh points. Oh my god. Oh my god. And guess who's at match point four match? Sweet is electrified right now, man. It's gonna be the boys over at Their 30 NRG point win is the record for the point. highest point game in an ALGS finals lobby. With this momentum and being the first team on match point so early, it seemed all but locked in that energy was going to win the LAN. All they had to do is win one Energy or on match game. point. There were questions raised time and time again of can they do it? Well, they've certainly made a statement here. Because we talked about it yesterday. Stormpoint was a weakness for NRG. They struggled on it a little bit. At the end, of, they really started prioritizing that KP. They pushed for those kills because that was going to get them to where they needed to be on the leaderboard to keep them safe. Now here, it got them where they needed to be in terms of match point. And then they can focus on their game when they're stronger on World's Edge. It's, it's pretty phenomenal to watch the growth of NRG this season in terms of being a, a team that not only has the mechanical skill, the ability conversationally from a strategic standpoint, but also the clutch factor and to win games on big stages. That we have at match point, NRG, TSM, and Xset all right next to each other. Taking less They're gonna run to us. They're gonna run to us. Yep. On me. Need help. Kill him, kill him. That's one. I hit him Rush, NRG Sweet Dreams. And Sweet's gonna go down here. Matu at one Back HP. Off. Meanwhile, oh. NRG are down to two. NRG down to two, and it's Fnatic who are having an influence now. Fnatic are jumping on them. Yeah. Gilderson's down as well. Oh, I did throw an Ada. How did we just let that fucking happen? I swung immediately, got a triple push. No. Energy's They're fate really struck again. A tough rotation in game seven allowed Energy to be taken out early. With Ascend and TSM on match point, the tournament was set to end as soon as they were the only ones left. Now, because of their dominant performance and 10 point advantage, they earned most points on the day and secured second place, taking home a $160,000 prize. It was unfortunate to see a big championship win once again slip away from this team after three years. But Energy proved one thing for sure. For all the people that think Energy couldn't perform at LAN, couldn't compete with the best in the world, they were a top team each step of the way through one of the most competitive tournaments in Apex history. Guild was a perfect addition to help in the offensive meta Apex was now seeing, and Sven is one of the hardest working analysts in the scene putting in 18 hour work days for the team with them getting better and better every time they compete there is no doubt that energy will soon see themselves on top
And if you want to know the story of the showdown of Apex's two biggest rivals, you want to watch this video right here.